when U.S. Air Force investigated unexplained UFO sightings during Cold War. On the afternoon of June 24, 1947, Amateur aviator Kenneth Arnold was flying near Mount Rainier, Washington, when he suddenly spotted nine unusual objects on the horizon. Arnold claimed the craft flitted from side to side and flipped in unison like the tail of a Chinese kite, and he estimated they were moving at around 1,700 miles per hour, far faster than any known aircraft. He initially assumed the physics-defying objects must be secret military vehicles, but he later admitted the incident was as much a mystery to me as it is to everybody else. Today we will cover the unexplained mysteries about how U.S. Air Force investigated UFO sightings during Cold War. Arnold's exceptional story before long discovered its way into papers the nation over, and journalists jumped on his depiction of the items as moving like a saucer on the off chance that you skip it across water. Within days, the expression flying saucer was conceived. Combined with the renowned July 1947 episode at Roswell, New Mexico, when the Air Force guaranteed a military climate expand was confused with an outsider rocket, Arnold's experience helped sparkle a rush of flying saucer sightings across the United States. The military neglected the vast majority of these nearby experiences as misidentifications or simple hokum. However a couple of reports came from air traffic regulators and business pilots, individuals prepared to look through the skies with an insightful eye. The hysteria also dovetailed with the beginning of the Cold War, leading many to speculate that the mysterious sightings might be hostile Soviet aircraft. Thus began official government investigations into the mysterious phenomena. First Invasions, Project Sign Following an official Air Force inquiry, Lt. Gen. Nathan Twining fired off a memo in late 1947 describing the flying disc phenomenon as something real and not visionary or fictitious. He suggested the military launch an investigation into the source of the sightings. By 1948, the Air Force had initiated Project Sign, the first of three military offices tasked with collecting and analyzing reports of what were termed unidentified flying objects. Project Sign's examiners immediately inferred that UFOs weren't digging out from a deficit the Iron Curtain, their flight attributes essentially didn't coordinate with those of any synthetic aircraft, however some in the group may have accepted that UFOs were not of this world. As indicated by Air Force official Edward Drippelt and other people who read UFOs for the public authority, Project Sign created a report in the mid-year of 1948 theorizing that the sightings may be proof of interplanetary or extraterrestrial art. Air Force Metal apparently dismissed and annihilated the record because there was no hard proof for its decisions. Right up till today, no duplicates of the report have at any point been recuperated. Project Blue Book, Saucer Sightings and that's only the tip of the iceberg. Project Sign was terminated in late 1948 and replaced by the short-lived Project Grunge, which was later succeeded in 1951 by the now famous Project Blue Book. Based at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio, Blue Book served as the government's main repository for sightings of unidentified aerial phenomena. Over the course of the following 18 years, its little staff investigated a huge number of reports and regularly went into the field to talk with Americans who had encountered close experiences with all way of flying saucers and plates, stogie molded rockets and astonishing evening time lights. The Blue Book time started with a bang. Project Sign and Grudge had just arrived at the midpoint of around 170 UFO reports every year except 1952 brought an uncommon 1,501 sightings. Maybe the most uncommon of all came in July 1952, when a progression of surprising blips abruptly lit up radar screens across Washington, D.C. Confounded military faculty mixed planes to capture the intruders, however while their pilots detailed seeing splendid lights moving during that time sky, they couldn't get them. In the wake of the sightings, 
The U.S. Air Force held a press conference in which Major General John Samford said the government would continue to investigate reports made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. Samford said the events in Washington may have been temperature inversions. Samford said the events in Washington may have been any conceivable threat to the United States. In spite of Samford's cases, numerous in President Harry Truman's organization were without a doubt worried that UFOs were a security danger. Regardless of whether the sightings were genuine or simply widespread panic, reports from Froze residents risked stifling government correspondence's channels. Some in the CIA even accepted the Soviets could arrange a UFO episode to help screen an assault on the United States. In January 1953, the CIA convened a group of experts under the direction of Caltech physicist H.P. Robertson to review the flying saucer issue. This Robertson panel concluded that most UFO sightings could be easily explained away as harmless optical illusions or weather phenomena. Still, the group suggested the government should take steps to debunk UFO events to help prevent a potential public uproar. In a move that would provide fuel for conspiracy theorists' fires for years to come, they also suggested that the Fed soothe the national consciousness by using mass media, celebrities and even the Walt Disney Company to ridicule and discredit UFOs. With the assistance of regular citizen cosmologist J. Allen Hynek, Project Blue Books examiners went through the following quite a while exposing UFO sightings as everything from lies and misidentified aircraft to birds, climate inflatables, galactic wonders and contrails. The group effectively cleared up huge number of cases, yet their clarifications regularly appeared as fantastic as the actual reports. A 1966 UFO in Michigan was blamed on swamp gas, and in 1968, Blue Book concluded that a group of B-52 pilots who witnessed strange lights moving over North Dakota had simply seen the star Vega. Among the many who reserved harsh words for Blue Book's methods was none other than Dr. Hynek, who had been with the program since the days of Project Sign and was popularly viewed as its chief debunker. The entire Blue Book operation was a foul up, he later wrote in the 1970s. Not enough attention was paid to the subject to acquire the kind of data needed even to decide the nature of the UFO phenomenon. Reassessing Air Force Investigations After Blue Book's famous swamp gas explanation and other far-fetched attempts to move UFOs into the identified category, future President Gerald Ford, then a Michigan congressman, called for a full-blown congressional investigation to allay any apprehensions that the Air Force was engaged in a cover-up. The outcome was a free examination on UFOs financed by the government and run out of the University of Colorado. Driven by physicist Edward U. Condon, the gathering previously assembled in late 1966 proceeding delivering its discoveries in a long 1968 book named Logical Study of Unidentified Flying Objects. The Condon report was unequivocal in its findings, our general conclusion is that nothing has come from the study of UFOs in the past 21 years that has added to scientific knowledge, it read. Our general conclusion is that nothing has come from the study of UFOs in the past 21 years that has added to scientific knowledge. Critics asserted the investigation was one-sided Condon himself depicted it as a disaster and doomed drivel. However its discoveries persuaded the Air Force to at last reassess Project Blue Book. On December 17, 1969, the Secretary of the Air Force delivered a notice declaring that the examination disaster. By then, Blue Book had analyzed 12,618 cases of flying objects in America's skies, 701 of which remained unidentified. A few days later, a New York Times editorial said the decision to close Blue Book should be applauded as a victory for rationality. No doubt the true believers will continue the quest, the article added no doubt the true believers will continue the quest. With the end of Project Blue Book, the federal government officially got out of the business of UFOs. President Jimmy Carter later suggested that NASA look into the subject in 1979. 
but the agency demurred on the grounds that there was not enough tangible evidence to warrant a study. Nevertheless, several other Western nations have continued investigating. A UFO desk run by the British Ministry of Defense remained in operation until as recently as 2009, and France continues to keep an eye on the sky to this day under the aegis of GAPAN, a government agency tasked with collecting and analyzing UFO reports.